what factors should I consider when I'm setting rental price from, uh, for my property? Uh, this particular question came from uh, a property owner. Uh, welcome to Matters Real Estate. Uh, this is Q&A series and this is episode number nine. One of the biggest decisions you, you, you make uh, as a property owner is how much to charge your tenants for rent. Because you need to set an amount which makes you make a profit and at the same time which is within the market rates and which doesn't make your house or your apartment be vacant for so long pricing you out of the market. Of course, obviously you cannot come up with just a figure. You need to consider a variety of factors before you come up with a figure that really suits as the rent for your particular property. In this video I want to talk about some of the factors, obviously not all of them, but some of them that I think are very key and that you need to consider before you come up with that figure for the rent for your property because that really determines if you get return on your investment and how long it's going to take and Basically, if you are in the market and if you are in business at large. So on the factor number one, you need to consider the historical unit prices. And what I mean by this is that if you recently or you've just acquired a property, you need to ask the previous owner how much they were charging for that, uh, for that particular property. Obviously, you can't settle for that price uh, over and above. You just need to, to have a base figure to start from. Like I've said, you can't really choose that figure and stick to it because the market, it may not be relevant anymore. The market might have changed, the condition of the particular property might have changed over time, but it gives you an idea where to start from. And uh, this might be impossible if it's a newly constructed property, but either way, you still need to find out how much you can charge. And then on the point number two is that you need to look out for the competing prices in the area. Check out for the homes and apartments in your area and try to compare apples to apples. Basically, try to compare. If, if yours is a two-bedroom apartment, you also need to compare it with another two-bedroom apartment in the same neighborhood but of the same quality to be able to have an idea of how much you want to charge for your apartment because you don't want to underprice yourself and at, at the same time, you don't want to put your price so high in that you remain vacant for so long. And then on number three, on factor number three that you need to consider before you set your rental price for your property is you need to check the livability of your, of your property. I mean, you just need to see, to check how specific or how different is your, is your property compared to the other property in that particular neighborhood or in that particular compound. Don't just come up with a figure make sure you can justify it. Uh, like how attractive is your property to the potential tenants? Does it give a better view? Does it have a, a, a nice nice here balcony that you see? You have nice views around. Uh, is it more spacious? Have you just renovated it? Because these are some of the important questions that you need to ask yourself because if your answer is, if you, I mean, if your place is better or worse, than the competition, then you need to make your you need to decide your price accordingly, because otherwise, if you don't adjust yourself, you kind of price yourself out of the market, either above or lower the lower uh, lower than the market rates, which either way, it has an adverse uh, effect on your on your rental property. And then on number four, you need to master the timing in that. You need to know the seasons and the fluctuation of the market conditions uh, because market, like, just like any other economy, property markets are always, they are constantly changing, I mean they are changing all the time. There are so many factors are, that are at, uh, at play. You need to study the housing prices, the demand of the market, of your property and of the neighborhood at large. So that whichever price you settle for, it is something which is within the market and it which is within the time, the timing of the market. And then uh, on the next 
thing that you need to consider is amenities and utilities. You need to know um, what are the costs or what other utilities are included in that particular rent. I mean, if the rent includes electricity, water, internet, DSTV, and all those things, you need to make sure that your price is good enough to cater for those, uh, for those utilities. Because like I've said, you need to make money out of that particular property. So you need to make sure that whatever you price yourself on, it, after you reduce your costs, after you deduct your costs, you get money out of it. Otherwise, you'll be out of business if you use all the money to pay the costs and all the other humanity, uh, all the other uh, utilities and amenities. The other point is almost the same as utilities, is that as you make that decision, you need to be aware of the costs that come to that with the, with the rent. Uh, you need to know about the property taxes, the property rent, the property rates. You need to, however, as much as the, the, those rates are annually, you need to spread them over the monthly so that you know how much of your rent goes to pay for property taxes, goes to pay the rent rates for that particular property, and most importantly, how much of that rent goes to pay mortgage if you have one, pays insurance for that particular property. If your property is under property management company, you need to know how much of those costs. You need to put them together and know how much are they. And after I pay the cost and the amenities and the utilities, how much do I remain with? Because whatever you remain with is your net. And also part of the cost, you also need to know the repair and maintenance costs. If they are, you need to be very clear, are they on the landlord, are they on the tenant? So that whatever you price yourself with, it's within the business sense. Because I've seen so many property owners that always tell me that they don't get anything significant from their, from, from their property. Everything goes to their costs and all that. So you need to be very keen on that and make sure you make the, the, the wise decision on that one. And uh, the next point you need, which is very clear and very important that I've seen many property owners and landlords suffer from is vacancy tolerance. You need to know yourself and you need to know that, to know that some landlords are tolerant to vacancy than others. What I mean is that there are some landlords who are okay their property going for a month without a tenant and then getting up a good tenant after one year and this the difference is between if you are under a mortgage scheme and you are supposed to be paying monthly monthly installments on your mortgage you don't want your property to be vacant even for more than two months because you need to make that particular uh, payments every month if your property is not on mortgage it's fully fully owned by you that might be you might be flexible enough and take your time to get uh, a quality tenant because basically what happens is that sometimes you can settle for a lower price to reduce uh, those costs or those financial constraints on your side because i've seen people who take two years be before getting clients or tenants for their for their for their for their property trying to look for that for that uh, most appropriate tenant but what happens is that even if they get a tenant after two years on the price that they are asking for, they are not likely to recover from the loss because a loss for 24 months is not likely to be compensated by a good tenant who has just come in and whose margin is not that big from the offers they have been getting. So it's very important to understand your situation, to know really what your tolerance in terms of vacancy is so that as you make your decisions, you don't let your property stay vacant for so long in such a way that you cannot be able to recover. And then on the last point, you need to understand your goals very well. Uh, as the landlord, are you trying to maximize profitability? Are you trying to clear a loan? Are you trying to kind of settle something? Because if you are after clearing a mortgage which has been on, on, uh, over your head and around your neck for some time, you might want to let your property to be rented as soon as possible, even if it is three quarters of the price, instead of having to stay vacant for so long. So understand your goals very well, run your calculations, do, uh, 
and um, make sure that whatever figure you test you settle for it works for you it works for your situation and it is within the market uh, it's within the market range yeah like because like uh, I always say it is sometimes it's worth your time if you charge less rent and get tenant soonest than waiting to get that ideal tenant and you stay vacant for two years for 24 months it's quite a long time especially if you have mortgage and other costs to pay and some costs are very uh, constant like land rates service charge cleaning costs so you really have to make your decision very well basing on that and you as a property owner and this is what i have I always say almost every other time is that you need to have a room for flexibility. You cannot afford to be rigid in a market that is changing every day. Property market is changing every other time. And you as a property owner, as a landlord, you can only do yourself a favor by adjusting yourself according to the market. You can't charge this amount of rent for, the, for five years. You need to see what is happening around and adjust accordingly. Otherwise, you may end up with a property vacant for even three years so as a as a property owner expect fluctuations of uh, of the market price and um if you, especially if you are new if you're a new property owner if you're a new landlord you should know that the game is tough it's not always easy and sometimes if you're interested in, in making things easier for yourself consider hiring uh, or rather employing services of property management company. Sometimes they make things easier for you, especially if you are newer and new in the game. That way you make sure that you minimize uh, the costs, you maximize your profits, and you minimize the vacancy levels, and uh, that way you get return on your investment faster than trying to, be, to do everything by yourself. So thank you so much for watching my videos. It's always a pleasure to have you around. And it's always a pleasure also when I see different people sending, send, sending in questions, opinions, recommendations from property owners to tenants to landowners to investors. So it's always a pleasure knowing that someone out there is watching. They are benefiting from the content that I'm putting across. So always feel free to leave your comment, to leave your suggestions and to always leave your opinions uh, there and I will appreciate to go through all of them and respond to them uh, uh, accordingly. Uh, remember to subscribe so that each and every time that I, I post a new video, you'll be the first one to be notified.